Welcome back to Sologenics' channel, everybody. We're sitting here once again with Chief Scientific Officer, Dr. Oriella Danini. We're going to dive into an exciting press release, but first off, Oriella, how are you doing today? Great. Thank you, Michael. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. So you're the perfect person to explain this for this news release. So the announcement was Sologenics has a heat-stable COVID-19 vaccine boost neutralizing activity against SARS COVID-2, including Delta and Omicron in non-human primates. So first and foremost, touch on the fact that this is like seven months after the primary vaccine is received and that it like affects Delta and Omicron. Right. So one of the, as you know, we've been developing our heat stable program for a while now, and, and actually we've been able to move it into the COVID-19 space relatively rapidly. Um, as we continue to test this, uh, one of the things we thought based on our last results in non-human primates that was very interesting was how fast um, we got a response if the animal had been um, previously infected. And that made us think that perhaps the vaccine would also function very well as a booster. So in this particular test, uh, we took some animals that had previously been, had two doses of an adenovirus vectored vaccine. Um, and then, uh, you know, seven months had elapsed. Uh, we measured their uh, neutralizing antibody levels, and then we boosted them with a single dose of our um, Cyvax or COVID-19 uh, vaccine candidate. And we found a very rapid response in the neutralizing antibody titers. So neutralizing antibody titers are titers that um, we measure that are able to neutralize the uh, virus, not just recognize the virus. And when we do that assay, uh, specific for Delta and Omicron, we see really good responses. Yeah, so I imagine, again, like as you had said, with rapid enhancement of neutralizing antibody responses, this is what you guys were hoping to see out of this trial, correct? Yeah, absolutely. We definitely wanted to see, and we were expecting to see very rapid response. So we had, even as early as one week post the administration of the booster, we were seeing up to 27-fold increases for, um, for Delta and um, values for Omicron, which was important because prior to, um, to boosting these animals, only one of them had even the barest level of a neutralizing titer against Omicron. So that was really, really encouraging to see. Agreed, agreed, especially with Omicron being one of the more elusive strains right now in terms of getting coverage for. So I guess one of the most key things for this is the heat stability. Can you explain to people the importance of that? So heat stability is something we've been building into all of our vaccine programs. And heat stability relates to the ability of the vaccine to be stored at ambient temperature. So just sort of stored on a shelf in a room. You don't need a minus 80 freezer. You don't need, you know, dry ice to ship it around. And that's a real advantage. Um, even you know, in the United States, logistics around shipping these uh, vaccines with the dry ice and the everything else was, was difficult. But imagine what it might be in countries that have less developed infrastructure systems. And yet those countries also have tremendous amounts of COVID. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen in this pandemic, we're really a global population when it comes to spread of mutations and different versions of COVID. So it's really important to have, I think, a vaccine that can be distributed more widely, distributed more easily uh, throughout the world and still have a very rapid response. Agreed, agreed. And Oriola, thank you for coming on. This is very exciting news. And I encourage anybody watching, if you guys have further questions, don't be afraid to ask us and check out the news release below. But for now, Oriola, any closing words to people before we go? No, thanks very much for your time today, Michael. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us. And everybody have a wonderful day.